And here it comes, level 76 agility. Every time I'm doing something else on the computer that I can't really focus on RuneScape with, I usually just train agility and I've been sick for the last week. So I've been putting off a video just a tad, but in the meantime, we managed to get five agility levels, which is very nice, honestly. We also managed to get a bunch of stuff from random events. We also have 176 marks of grace. And if I turn those into Emily's packs, we should be getting 2.7 mil which is a very, very nice bonus. We also got this stuff from a maze random, and we got a book of knowledge, which I'm going to put on Slayer, bringing us up to level 14 Slayer. There are a lot of things I want to do in this video, and the vast majority of those things are going to be quests, and the very first quest we are going to be doing is the one that I always have a hard time pronouncing, Ick Flaren's Little Helper. Sounds like I have a lisp, but yeah, came out in 2005, we have everything we need to do it, so let's go get it done. After maxing a level 3 skiller at the very end of 2023, I've decided to dive into uncharted territory by making my first ever true main account. I did have a main account in the past, but the farthest I've progressed was the Dragon Slayer and Monkey Madness quests. I've never gotten a fire cape, never did barrows, definitely didn't do any GWD, and I haven't even done desert treasure before. So forget what you know about my past accounts and that I haven't even touched a combat set since 2014 and join me while I play OSRS in its intended fashion for the very first time ever. This is maxing a main. Okay, so we have everything we need to do this quest, a bunch of really weird things. But before we do that, I want to turn in these marks of grace and sell them because the price is kind of high right now. It's almost 16,000 GP each token, and I've never seen it that high before. So we're definitely going to be turning these in and putting the Amelie's packs in the Grand Exchange. In the meantime, while I do that, though, let me show you guys where we are on the season one goals of maxing a main. Banged out a few quests last video, and we also got the climbing boots. So those things are done, and we're going to be knocking out a few more quests here off of this list as well today. We're going to be doing some extra ones as well, just to be a little bit efficient. I mean, you guys all know the drill. I'm basically an Iron Man at this point, but it's not going to be that way forever. Eventually, we're going to get into doing some higher leveled stuff. But until then, we're going to be efficient, and we're going to be doing some more quests. All right, we managed to get 1,700 Amelie's Crystals. I'm going to put these in at the actively traded price of 1587 while those things sit in the grand exchange let's go get this quest done i've never done it before and i know you get the cat speak amulet from it so i'm kind of looking forward to that just another weird item to get on the account oh and by the way the quest guide says that we need to kill a level 75 or 81 guardian and a possessed priest which is level 91 at least i think i'm reading that correctly it's kind of written weird here we are currently level 53 so our best bet is currently magic because we only have 42 strength so hopefully protection prayers work but i guess we'll see by the way, if you're new to this game and you're watching my gameplay to Maximane from scratch, don't try to be efficient, just have fun, play the game, explore on your own, you don't need to be efficient in this game. But by all means, if you do want to be efficient and you want to watch my videos, I don't know if they're the most efficient, but yeah, you could do that too. But for those who don't know, I know that there are people who are new to the game that subscribe to me for this series. You don't have to do everything I'm doing in the order that I'm doing it in, just have fun. This game really does have so much to offer, and there's no point in playing a game if you're not having fun. So go and do something new. Go talk to people in World 2, or just hang around at the Grand Exchange or something and talk to some randoms in free-to-play. That's my number one advice for new players, even though nobody asked me for it. I genuinely had no idea that there was a Sphinx in RuneScape. I don't even know if this is the only one, but never seen anything like this before. Looks pretty weird, to be honest. Oh no, the guy didn't tell me to bring an anti-poison. Oh, uh, okay. Hopefully this isn't too bad. I don't have food either. What was I thinking? I knew I had to kill something. Ah, uh, can I get behind this safe spot? I can. Very nice. Pretty odd that I didn't take any poison damage yet. I was supposed to take some 56 seconds ago, it says. But um, hopefully we don't take poison. Maybe it just, I don't, I don't know. Maybe this is an instance. No? Okay. And now the poison damage is gone. I have no idea what just happened here. By the way, guys, I just want to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed to my channel so far. It truly does mean a lot to me. This channel has been growing like crazy. I'm really loving making videos for everybody. I'm really happy that everyone's enjoying them as well. My goal was to reach 9,500 subscribers by November 15th and then 10,000 by the end of the year. I truly do think it's possible, so if I can just gain even 10 subscribers this video, I will be immensely grateful. Yeah! 
What just happened? I fell down the hole? What? I was also going to release a guide for the Halloween event like I do every year, and I was prepared for it, but this event came out earlier than any Halloween event did in old school's history, and I wasn't expecting it. Ended up waking up at 2pm, and the event was already out for a while, there were already multiple guides on it, so I do apologize for that, but I am going to be making one for the Christmas holiday event. Whenever that comes around, be sure to look out for that video as well. I'm usually the first or one of like the top two people to get out a guide first. And it's been that way for pretty much every holiday event, except for this year's Halloween event. Which reminds me, I still have to do the event on this account. So we'll do that right after this quest is over. And there we go. We successfully killed the priest. I'm gonna pick up that defense potion, might as well. Pick up the bones too. Bury it for the corrupted old man. Almost ran out of prayer points. Happy we didn't. And there we go. Ick. Laren's little helper has been completed, giving us two quest points, 4,500 thieving XP, 4,000 agility and woodcutting XP, and an amulet of cat speak. Should go up a few levels here. Uh, let's see what they are. Come on. Okay, I'm just gonna cancel that. 29 thieving, and 22 woodcutting. Very, very nice. Currently have 644 total level. Very curious to see what our total level is by the end of the video. But already, let's go get this Halloween event done. Hopefully it's not too long. By the way, Drainer Village is looking very nice with the Halloween decorations. Is it usually like this on Halloween? I don't think it usually is. But it looks really nice. Oh my. I am not looking forward to copying this. <sighs> okay. All right, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I am insanely happy that I didn't make a guide this year. <laughs> this is the most obnoxious thing. And apparently I'm still missing one pumpkin. Which one is it? What is wrong here? Is it one of these? Like, am I stupid? Which one am I missing? They're all right? Obviously not. What one am I... Is that a wrong call? Is it this one? Oh my god. Please tell me that's the last one. Okay, good. All right. I like the idea of this event, but the execution I absolutely hated. That was not very fun. But regardless, the event has been completed, giving us a carved pumpkin head, scarecrow shirt, and a scarecrow. We also got all of the rewards for the previous Halloween events. I already have them all, so they're all still chilling at Diango in Drainer Village. But if you were expecting to get something and you didn't get it, chances are you had a full inventory and your previous Halloween events went to Diango in Drainer Village. Okay, let's do a do a dark green and we will do a new carve to make it depressed. There we go. So now we can cosplay as everybody who views my content. But honestly though, this event was okay. It could have been a little bit more Halloween-ish. They really decked out Drainer Village. I was hoping that we would be doing something in the village, but I guess not. Yo, check this place out. I know I'm supposed to leave, but... This place is pretty cool. A throne encrusted with sparkling gems. How beautiful. The quest log said that this was a short quest, but it seems to have taken me so far, like 12 minutes of running around. I don't know if I'm just going really slow. Granted, this quest would have been done a lot quicker if I had the dig site pendant and access to fairy rings. We're going to be unlocking that stuff in this video, so I'm really excited to unlock new methods of transportation around the game because this is quite a lot. But anyway, the golem has been completed, giving us a thousand crafting XP and a thousand thieving XP. And it brought us up to level 30 crafting, which is very nice. And 30 thieving. Very, very nice. Double 30s. Looking good. Up next, we have a quest that I have no idea what it is. I have never even heard of it. But it is the riveting tale of a lily pad labor dispute. Uh, it says it's very short. It came out this year. So... Yeah, let's go check this thing out. We got to go all the way down here. Okay, wait, that's at... Is this the new place? I think this is Varlamore. That's the new place that came out. Yeah, 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 okay. So I just got to go to Varlamore. And I don't remember how. Uh, great, now I got to go use the... Okay, so I have to go to the East Varrock Gate. To my knowledge, I've never been to Varlamore. I don't even remember if we went there during the Children of the Sun quest that we did in the other video. Okay, so down here is where we get to Barlamore on this Quetzal. Very interesting. Almost feels like World of Warcraft, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm pretty sure I haven't been here before. 
Yeah, no, I definitely would have remembered this. And now we have to run all the way down here. Would have been so much faster if I just used this fairy ring teleport. One day, one day we will be optimal, I swear. Bro, we got happy baras here and I stopped at the bank to grab an axe and I could have just got one right here. But they have capy baras, man. Capybara. Capybara. Capybara, 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 capybara. Oh, interesting. There's a tree patch here. Cool. I could add this to my farming run once we start training farming. But anyway, here we go. Starting like the longest quest name in history. Hey, we got a little gnome plushie. That's cute. Ew, bruh. That is not what I expected to happen. I also haven't really been reading too much of this quest dialogue. I really should be because it's short. But anyway, there we go already. It only took four and a half minutes, according to my OBS. Completing this quest gave us 2,000 woodcutting XP and access to a new hardwood farming patch. Okay, so this is a hardwood patch, not a regular tree patch. Interesting. That 2,000 XP brought us up to 25 woodcutting. Very, very nice. And the next quest in line is finally the Lost City. We're finally going to have the ability to equip dragon weapons once we get the attack level to do so. And it's a prerequisite for Fairy Tale Part 1 to give us access to fairy rings. So, very excited to finally get this thing done. Oh, wait a minute. We need 36 woodcutting. I forgot about that in order to do Lost City. Looks like we're going to be grinding some woodcutting levels unless I can find another quest to do before this one that will get us up a little bit more. Uh, 36 isn't too bad of a grind though. And we also need 31 crafting, but that's boostable. Um, I'm just going to get 31 crafting here at the Grand Exchange and then we'll figure out woodcutting. Okay, so it looks like from here that I bought too many emeralds to get level 31 crafting. It's way faster than I thought that it was going to be. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, we're only one short, but I have more in the Grand Exchange. Let's just sell these real quick. And of course, I withdrew those as a note, which is not what I wanted to do. There we go. Level 31 crafting. Okay, so I looked up the quests that reward woodcutting XP. And it seems like we've done most of them that we have the requirements for. I mean, we could do animal magnetism to give us 2,500 more woodcutting XP. However, in order to do that quest, we need 35 woodcutting to begin with. And we also need level 18 slayer, which we don't have, and level 30 range, which we don't have either. So it looks like we're going to be training woodcutting the old-fashioned way. And there we go. Level 36 woodcutting coming in here. We now have every level that we need in order to do Lost City. Did it take too long? Took probably about 40-ish minutes. I might be overestimating that. But regardless, it didn't feel too, too bad to train woodcutting for a change. Especially with forestry. Because the forestry events probably got me like three levels on their own. But anyway, let's go do Lost City. Okay, I've literally killed seven zombies so far. Still have yet to get the bronze axe. Hopefully it comes soon. I only have 91 more casts of Wind Blast. And that's what I need in order to kill the tree spirit thing that comes out in a second here. Uh, please have an axe. Please have an axe. No. Okay. And we're now down to 82 casts left. And there we go. Oh, and we got a zombie bone. Nice. Double loot. We need that for... Dragon Bone Man Part 2, I believe. Very cool. Didn't even know that was going to pop up. All right, now let's try to get this. I think I could safe spot it over here. Yes. Okay. Oh, there we go. Level 43 magic sneaking in here. We can now do super heat item. Very cool. And level 39 hit points. I wasn't expecting that, even though I probably should have noticed it up here. I think that's the last one. There we go. We can now chop the Draymond tree, which we are going to... Whoa! I have never seen an animated thing in your inventory before. That is so cool. I wonder if it's because I turned on a plug-in or something, or if it's actually like that. That's awesome. I have never seen that. I wonder if magic logs do that too. All right, beautiful. Now let's get out of here. We'll go to Varrock because I did not bring any earth runes. While we're here in Lumbridge, we might as well pray at the altar, recharge our prayer. I was planning on using prayer down there in the caves, at least for Mystic Might to increase our magic, but I completely forgot that it drains your prayer when you go down there. So, 
nice that we didn't eat it. And here we are in a member's world with someone cannoning rats and big frogs. I did not know this was a training spot member's world. I thought it was like a free to play only thing for the big bones, but I guess not. And without further ado, the Lost City has been completed, giving us three quest points and access to Xanarus. Very nice, very nice. This looks great with 117 with these uh, illuminating mushroom torches. Looks really cool. Now that Lost City's out of the way, we can finally start Fairy Tale Part 1 and get access to Fairy Rings. While picking up some second tours from the Grand Exchange for Fairy Tale Part 1, I forgot I had these in here. They all sold for 2.66 mil. I cannot believe that we are almost at a 10 mil cash stack. But anyway, just wanted to update you guys on the sale, and I will see you during Fairy Tale Part 1. Look at this guy. He is the Fairy Godfather. And it's funny because he's essentially an Italian mobster. Gotta love RuneScape, man. The next step is to talk to Xander in the Dark Wizard's Tower west of Faldor. I did not know this place existed. I only knew of the Wizard Tower. I didn't know there was a Dark Wizard Tower. Not nearly even remotely as cool. This is kind of cool though. As the regular real Wizard's Tower. I am learning so much new stuff already from my first ever main account. Oh my god. Look at this guy. He is dressed exactly how I used to dress. Where am I going? Back in the day, minus the Chronicle because it didn't used to exist. But that is wild. Stop moving so I can get a good shot. Look at this guy. I used to look exactly like him, but I used to have a clean shaven face. But this outfit is so on point. It's crazy. Oh my lord. These are expensive teleports. I'm only going to buy one for 40,000 GP. That's insane. All right. We now have a pair of magic sectors. I don't even know if I'm saying that word right, to be honest with you. I don't know if I've ever had these before on any of my other accounts in the past. I know that they're good for doing herb runs because I think it gives you an increased yield. I could be wrong, but yeah, we got the magic second tours. Let's go finish this quest and start part two so that we can finally use fairy rings. So supposedly the fight with this level 111 Tanglefoot goes off of your farming level, which is one. So hopefully protection prayers work with this. I didn't bring any food at all. I probably should have. Um, this is going to take a while. A max hit is a three, so that's not too good. I just hope that we're able to do 86 damage before we run out of prayer points. All right, we're about half health right now, and we have 12, 11 prayer points left. We're going to have to start flicking. Uh, I don't know what attack speed he's hitting at. Hopefully, I don't mess up here. Oh, I messed up. I messed up. I messed up. Okay, jeez, that was a close one. And now I'm getting attacked. All right, we got the Golden Queens at Second Tours. Got out of there with 13 HP, as well as five prayer points, which is not very good. But a nice perk about training agility when I'm not really playing the game is that we could use the best shortcut here, which is great because it also completed a hard task in the Lumbridge and Drainer area for the Achievement Diary, which is pretty cool. Fairy Tale Part 1 has been completed, giving us two quest points, 3,500 farming XP, 2,000 attack XP, 1,000 magic XP, and the magic secateurs. Farming level all the way from level 1 to 17. But other than that, there's not too much to do here with farming yet. But anyway, let's start Fairy Tale Part 2. We're not going to be completing it, but we got to start it in order to get the fairy rings. We don't even have any of the stats in order to do it if we wanted to. We need 40 thieving, 49 farming, and 57 herb lore as well. So it's a good thing that we only have to do this quest until we use a fairy ring and then we're good from there on out. All right, so I think we are finally good. Let's try a different configuration of somewhere completely different like the Tower of Life. And we should be able to teleport now. Beautiful. Yet another thing to mark off of our season one goals. We could finally go everywhere. I'm so excited. I haven't been able to use fairy rings since RuneScape 3 before it was even RuneScape 3. The next quest we are going to be doing is starting Recipe for Disaster. We're going to be doing both the Cook's quest and the Goblin quest as well. I don't think I've done either of those, but I know I did the mini quest that you needed to do to get the diving gear on my level 3 skiller so that I would be able to dive for seaweed and not worry about losing my breath. Though these might be new as well for me. I do not know yet. Oh. I did not think that the cook section would be 
this quick. It was just about as fast as Cook's Assistant, to be honest. Well, that's cool. It gives you a quest point, even though it's not like a real quest. It's like a mini quest. But I guess now we will get to the goblin section, which is next. And then after that, we are going to go do something else. Okay, there we go. Pretty easy. Got another quest point and a thousand cooking, crafting, and farming XP. And I think we can use the chest in the Lumbridge basement now. But anyway, it brought us up to level 20 farming, which is awesome because we can now grow sweet corn and 37 cooking, which is great because we can make blurberry specials. But anyway, let's get on to the next quest. And the next quest is going to be Sea Slug. You guys told me in the comments about sea slug and that it gives you a good fishing xp reward that i could have done in an earlier video to skip out on some fishing training for some reason on the wiki it wasn't showing that sea slug gave fishing xp and i think the reason it wasn't popping up was because we need level 30 fire making to do this quest and our fire making is currently level three so i'm gonna head over to the grand exchange buy some logs and get level 30 fire making and 22 minutes later, here we are with level 30 fire making. We can now burn willow logs if we need to. We now have another level 30 stat on the account. We're really creeping closer to the 30 base that we need for season one. But without further ado, let's start the sea slug. All right, the sea slug has been completed, giving us a quest point, 7,100 fishing XP and access to the fishing platform. Not really sure what that's used for exactly. I don't think it has any of the best training methods we could do, but it's all good. We got level 41 fishing from this. No unlocks at level 41. And the next thing we're going to be doing is the dwarf part of recipe for disaster. We need a lot of items, so we're going to have to go to the Grand Exchange and buy some. But yeah, let's go get the dwarf recipe for disaster mini quest done. All right, so we need ice gloves to grab this rock cake unless you telegrab it. That's what we're going to be doing because I keep forgetting to get ice gloves. And I think the rock cake is what they use in P. Kang videos for Darox. I think you could just eat this and it should lower my health. Yeah. Okay. I guess this is what that's from. I didn't know that. Bada boom, bada bing. We have freed the mountain dwarf, given us a thousand cooking XP and a thousand slayer XP as well. We should be definitely going up a level here. Yeah. Level 17 slayer. We only need one more Slayer level and 16 range levels in order to do the Animal Magnetism quest, which is another thing on our Season 1 goals list. But we are not going to be doing that just yet. Instead, we are going to be doing the Mountain Daughter quest. Where is it here? Mountain Daughter, Star Quest Helper. There we go. Let's head on over to the bank because it says that we have all the stuff we need. And let's go get the bear head. We got this on our skiller account. It took a while with poison dynamite because I was using it wrong. But it should be a breeze, hopefully, on this account. And something very nice as well. We're going to be able to use our fairy ring in order to get there quicker. First time we're going to be using a fairy ring. Ooh, it is snowy here. What am I doing wrong here? It says to use the rope on the boulder outside of the mountain camp. That's this right here. I cannot push it because it says I cannot reach that. And I cannot use this rope either. Um, oh, that is embarrassing. Is that it? Is that all I got to do? Yeah, okay. Never mind then. While we're here at White Wolf Mountain, I think maybe we should get the ice gloves. Um, I think why not? I'm always going to just keep forgetting. Um, can I mine these? I don't remember how to do this. I have to wield it. Oh, mine it. There we go. I can't. Never mind. So we need 50 mining. All right. So forget I said anything. All right. It's finally time to kill the Kendall. On my skiller account, I failed this multiple times. Let's see. I think it's protect from melee. That's what would make sense here. This guy walks so jank. Look at that. Come on. I'm wasting prayer here. I'm already down a whole bunch of prayer points. I shouldn't have turned it on yet. Didn't bring any combat gear. I brought a little bit of food. We might need a prayer flick here. I'm not entirely sure yet. Uh, he only has 50 health. Yeah, this should be pretty easy. All right. Well, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. We now have the bear head. So much easier than trying to use poison dynamite on a level three with 10 hit points. I completely forgot to hit the record button, but there we go. Mountain Daughter has been completed. Gave us some prayer and attack XP. 
Didn't go up any levels though, but it's all good. The next quest in line is going to be rat catchers. I've heard some pretty negative things. At least I'm pretty sure that back in the day, I saw some videos of people hating this quest. Not sure if that's the quest I'm thinking of though, but I guess we will find out in a moment here. Oh my God. Oh, oh my God, not again. Okay, it was literally right there. So I see why this is one of the most disliked quest. Okay, I was that, why, how did he know? Okay, let's try again. And then I instantly get caught here. I could see why people don't like this quest, honestly. Um, it's really annoying. I'm pretty sure my cat is going to turn into an overgrown cat by the time I get to complete it. And I'm going to have to start all over or something. I don't know. This is terrible. And this is coming from a guy that went from level 70 to 99 thieving on my skiller doing squirk juice runs. Okay. This is not the same as that. These guys see you on every corner. It's super annoying. I need to get into that room over there. And this guy just won't move quick enough out of the way. If I walk out here, he's going to get me. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe I got lucky. Okay, let's get in here. Beautiful. Now what do I do? Okay, so now I just have to get into this room. Um which means that we're going to have to dodge this guy, which is not going to be fun because they take so long to turn. Like he's just going to stand here for like six seconds and then he's going to start to slowly move out of the way. Come on. Come on. I still can't go anywhere. Six and a half hours later. Now he's going to go there. And I think if I leave, he's going to catch me. So what do I do now? Do I just have to wait for him to walk all the way back? Okay, now's my chance. Go, 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 go. All right, finally. It only took like 15 minutes. The good thing is, this cat catches the rats pretty quickly. I think I've only missed one rat catch so far total in like the 15 that we had to do so far. Okay, finally. Good, good, good. I think we might be done here. Gotta head back to Jimmy Dazzler. And I hope that's the end of this quest. Uh, at least I hope that we don't have to do something like that again. Oh, no. We're gonna have to do a lot more catching, aren't we? Okay, so now my cat is going to be part of a cat fight, apparently. And uh, I have to feed it to heal it through the wall. Beautiful. Very nice. Very nice. Took about a whole minute, but our cat whooped some ass. And just when I thought we were done, we now have to travel to Keldegrim. Uh, where is Keldegrim? I have no clue. Uh, oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, is it? Yeah, it's a dwarf place, I think. Oh, apparently we can't because we need to be able to ride minecarts, which you get from starting the giant dwarf. So is there any other way... To get to Keldegrim? I don't know. Let me Google it. <sighs> okay, so traveling to Keldegrim requires starting the Giant Dwarf quest. So it looks like we have to start the Giant Dwarf, which I did not expect. Now we gotta pause this one. Uh, but alright, I mean, it seems like we have all of the requirements to do it. Yeah, I guess we'll just do the Giant Dwarf first. And, uh, yeah. So, let's get to it. Literally starting the giant dwarf is what it meant. Literally, the very first step, we're already in Keldegrim. I already bought everything I need to do this quest on the Grand Exchange. I'm just going to get this one done first, then we'll continue rat catchers. I already fixed my inventory and everything. Let's just get this done. Bro, you have got to be kidding me. They don't take banknotes, so I'm going to have to be running back and forth from the bank. It's not like it's far, but it's just annoying. So this time I need five gold ore. And then next time we'll see what we need. And I got to keep going back and forth and grabbing whatever he needs. No banknotes. Cannot believe it. Actually, I can. It seems like this quest came out in like 2004. When did this quest come out? Uh, where is it? No, 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 no. Where is it? The giant dwarf came out in 2005. I was close enough. And after seven minutes of running back and forth from the bank, we finally completed that step. I did not think this quest was going to be taking this long. I thought I would only have to do it a few times, but no, you have to do it multiple, multiple times. 
I would assume that I'm almost done with this quest now, which would be very nice. I mean, it's not what I was expecting to do, but I am glad that I'm getting it done so I don't have to do it later. It is really fun making progress on this account because obviously I've never had a main account before. So it's really cool to see all of these different areas and stuff that I've never been in and storylines that I've never experienced. And I'm not sure what this camera angle is right now, but it's absolutely atrocious. And look at this guy, Red Axe Director. Sheesh, imagine looking like this. Whoa. That was a long cutscene. Around 30 seconds into it, I went to the bathroom and then went downstairs and got something to drink, came back upstairs, and it still was not over. But anyway, the giant dwarf has been completed, giving us a ton of stuff. 2,500 mining XP, smithing and crafting, as well as 1,500 magic, thieving and fire making XP. Very nice, all of a sudden quest to do. And we got level 26 mining from it and level 36 smithing as well. 33 crafting as well and 31 thieving as well absolutely crazy and 31 fire making as well jeez all right that quest was definitely worth doing now let's get back to rat catchers this thing is taking way longer than it should be and we're not done yet gotta love it now we gotta go to port serum i was just space barring through the chat box and uh i saw that the dude referenced something about wily cat so hopefully this is where I learn about Wily Cats because I've never known how to get them. I just assumed that they were like starved or something. I have no idea what I thought. I haven't even thought about Wily Cats since I was a kid. So I'm hoping that maybe this is where we learn how to get a Wily Cat because that would be super cool to have a Wily Hellcat in the future. That would be a pretty cool pet to follow me around until we eventually hopefully get a real pet. Okay, and the next step of the quest is to go all the way to Paul Nivnich. No, no, looks like we are going to have to take a magic carpet ride. Let's go. So excited. All right, I think this is the last step, finally. Didn't learn much about Wily Cats, but I also have been space barring through everything. But here we go. Two quest points rewarded, as well as 4,500 thieving XP. Level 33 thieving now and we are only 42 XP away from level 34. Next quest on the list is going to be the feud. I don't think I've ever done the feud. I could be wrong. It's another quest that came out in 2005. It says it's medium length and uh, we have everything to do it. So let's go get it done. Looking at the quest rewards for completing this quest, we can get a blackjack. So I definitely have done this on my skiller because I wanted to do blackjacking. Never actually did blackjacking though, it was way too quick and tensile for me, especially at the time. But I am excited to do this quest nonetheless. Alright, let's get this dunce event done and get another lamp on Slayer. And here we go. 255 Slayer XP, we did not get a level. However, on our next lamp or book of knowledge, we will be getting 18 Slayer, which is what we need for animal magnetism. That is pretty exciting to me, to be honest. Not one ounce of low-level Slayer trained yet. Let's keep it going. I am so confused. The code is 11358. And I did it multiple times, and it says that it's wrong. And so I looked it up on the wiki, and it says 112358. I'm going to show you guys. Watch. 1, 1, 2... Three, five, eight. Are you kidding me? I am not joking, guys. I did this exact same thing four or five times already. And of course, as soon as I start recording, it works. I'm happy that it did work because I'm not even joking. I did it three or four times. And then I had to look it up on the wiki to see if Quest Helper was wrong. And yeah, now it works all of a sudden. Okay, bro, there is no way. Okay, there we go. I hit this guy, I kid you not, probably 16, 17 times. And I keep splashing. Like, look at this. I'm convinced he's going to despawn before I even get a chance to kill him. All right, there we go. It all worked out. I'm going to take that Willow Blackjack from you, buddy. This quest is taking forever. I've been doing it for a half hour and it is currently 3.11 in the morning and I want to get it done with. And I don't have food or anywhere to safe spot. Can I safe spot him on this cactus? No, I'm going to die. 
Just kidding, I have protect from melee. Okay, cool. Hey, level 44 magic. Very nice, very nice. We are destroying this guy. I don't know why the other guy was so strong. And finally, with 12 HP and 32 prayer remaining, we are finally wrapping up this quest. I don't remember it taking this long. I mean, don't get me wrong, like 30 minutes for quest isn't bad, but geez, I mean, it said it was a medium length. All I've been doing is running and running and running and running. But anyway, not like it matters anymore because we just got 15,000 thieving XP. Sheesh, I did not know it gave that much. And we have the ability to blackjack now, which is very cool for the future. But it brought our thieving level all the way up to level 39, only 2,000 XP away from level 40. And believe it or not, even though it's currently 3.14 a.m., I want to bang out another quest. This time, it's going to be, can you guess it? Death on the Isle. It came out this year. I have no idea what it is. We have all of the requirements to do so. Children of the Sun is one of the requirements. So this one is probably going to be in Varlamore. Bro, this is crazy. I'm disguised as a butler. Look at how I run. Ah, I can't. Hold on. Let me run back outside. And look at how I run, though. <laughs> That's so funny. Can you guys believe it? We have Asmongold in OSRS before GTA 6. I cannot believe it. This guy has an actual Asmund cut. That's crazy. All right. Death on the Isle has been completed. Giving us two quest points. 10,000 thieving XP, 7,500 agility XP, 5,000 crafting XP, and the ability to use a costume needle. I'm not entirely sure what that is. Uh, I brought our thieving level up to 41. Very nice. And our crafting level up to 35. I think I just got to go back down to the costume lady to pick up the costume needle. And then I will look it up on the wiki and figure out what it is. Oh, that's really, really cool. Okay, I just looked up the costume needle on the wiki. And what it is, is a needle that you don't need thread for. So you could use it for crafting and you don't need to waste an inventory slot on thread, which is super cool. And I think you get it from her and there it is. Yeah, the costume needle. Very cool item. Never even thought that was an item in the game. Super, super unique. This quest was really fun. You really got to hand it to the OSRS quest people because a lot of these things are super cool. It's not like your typical MMO quests where it's just go and kill this many things or go and do this or escort quests and things like that. Almost all of Old School's quests are completely unique and it's really cool and I haven't seen it in any other game. Not really in the mood to do another quest right now, but what I am in the mood for because I keep forgetting video after video is I want to complete the bar crawl. We got the card a few episodes ago and we still need to do every single bar crawl besides the Rising Sun Inn. So let's go bang these out and get this thing done because I'm just going to keep forgetting about it unless we do it now. And the last one we need is in Yen Isle and I figured out probably the best method that I could use at this point for doing fairy rings using the arty cloak to teleport to the monastery and then running east to the fairy ring right over here. And there we go. So I think that might be the quickest way to get to the fairy rings. Uh, if it's not, let me know. I still really need to know the quickest way. And here we go. We are finally done with the bar crawl. Let's head on over to Barbarian Outpost and let's turn this thing in. And now I have the option to smash my vials once I am done so I don't have to keep dropping a vial every time I finish a potion. So far we've completed 64 out of 169 quests. That's crazy. We only need 105 more until we're done. The next quest we're going to be doing is all the way down here, which is Scorpion Catcher. Which came out in 2002. I think it's the oldest quest that we have done this video. Ooh, I kind of want that staff. That's kind of cool. Really dark blue with like a pinkish purple color orb on top. I don't know what rune that might correspond to, but super cool. Never seen this in the game before. All right, super simple quest, especially with the teleports that we have. And it only took about five minutes ish, if even. Here we go. Scorpion Catcher is completed. One quest point, 6,600 strength XP. Very nice. 
brought us up to level 43 strength and level 54 combat. How about that? I know I say very nice or very cool all the time, but uh, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Now, what are we going to do next? I'll tell you guys, it's the dig site. Looking forward to running around for like 40 minutes, just running and running and running. But then again, it is old school. And that's basically the entire game anyway. But we definitely need to get Dig Sight done, be able to use the Dig Sight pendant. This will be very helpful in the future. And it's a prerequisite to get on Fossil Island. Something we're definitely going to be taking advantage of in the future with herbivore and seaweed runs and all that. So let's go get it done. I'm going to go grab like nine stamina potions. Now here's the question. Am I going to spend 170,000 GP for 10 dig site teleports to make this quest probably three minutes quicker? Uh, no, I'm going to spend 188k. Let's go. Okay, and we finally completed the dig site. Good thing it gave us a ton of mining XP though. 15,300 mining XP and 2,000 herblore XP. We really needed some herblore levels. See how many it got us. Got us up to 36 mining. It got us 10 mining levels. That's crazy. And it brought our herb lore up to 19. Very nice, as I always say. And we still have two dig site teleport scrolls left, which I'm going to sell and get a nice 32k back. Okay. Now, the next quest we are going to be tackling is going to be... Where is it here? Elemental Workshop 2 came out in 2006 and it gives you the mind shield and the mind helmet. Now, as I said in a previous video, Elemental Workshop 1 was my favorite quest as a kid. It's the one that I did all on my own. Well, kind of on my own. I actually did it with my dad and I think that's why I like that quest so much is because my dad was on Rune HQ with me and doing the quest with me, which was really cool. It's, I still have the memory in my head. But Elemental Workshop 2, in my opinion, is not as cool because the mind helmet is ugly. And the mind shield is not as good looking as the elemental shield. But anyway, doesn't really matter. Let's go get the elemental workshop 2 done. I don't know what it is about these quests. I think that it's just because I don't have to talk to people all the time. It's just kind of a do your own thing. And the fact that this is pretty cool. I'm not even going to lie to you guys. Like, look at this area. It's like super different. I don't know. I mean, you're making elemental bars and you're by all the different elements and all the different things. It's super unique. Like, it's very different than the normal quests that you do. I know it's weird because a lot of people don't like these quests for some reason, but I really do enjoy them. Like, just look at this. I don't think that there's any other point in the game where you actually have to make your own bars like this or make... It's like a unique metal, unique processing, like, method. I don't know how to explain it, but, like, look at that. We're filling up the room to cool down the bar with water gotta empty it out it's just i don't know man i just don't know i love these quests i don't know i wish that they had part three on here i never did part three i know it's in runescape three with the i think it's cosmic stuff like you get a cosmic shield and helmet and stuff like that and i think you get boots and the boots look really cool i don't know the whole storyline of it in runescape three it probably intertwines with some other weird quests that they have that we don't have in old school but yeah i just love this stuff it's just super cool but anyway, I'm going to stop glazing Elemental Workshop, okay? Jeez. Oh, there we go. Elemental Workshop 2 has been completed, giving us a quest point, 7,500 crafting and smithing XP, and the ability to make mined equipment. I should have made two bars. We just got 39 smithing, by the way. Very, very good. And 38 crafting as well. But yeah, I thought that I was going to have enough to make both a mined helmet and... Ooh, did you see that animation? Ooh, that's pretty cool. Ooh, very cool. I don't think I've seen anyone wear this helmet in this game since I started playing it. But I thought I was going to get the mind shield. Do I have to go and do all that all over again and make a mind shield? Oh, God. All right. We made the mind shield to go with our mind helmet. I don't even know if this is useful in the game. But yeah, if the mind helmet has this cool emote, or animation rather, then I wonder what the shield has. Is it the same as the elemental shield? Yeah, it is. But it looks cool. It actually does look cool. It looks cooler than the Elemental Shield, which is very odd. Maybe it's because of 117 HD, but I guess just as an adult, I prefer this color scheme. It just goes with more stuff, I guess. But yeah, check it out. Very, very nice. But that is where I'm going to be ending today's video. But before we do end it, let's check out our new total level.
758. We can now go in the 750 total worlds, which is very cool. And let's check out our goals for season one and see what we marked off. So we managed to cross off barrier rings from our items and unlock section, as well as the dig site, lost city, and fairy tale part one quests. So all that we have left to end season one is get an Ava's device from doing animal magnetism, 60 attack to wield dragon weapons, enlightened journey for the air balloon transportation system, as well as holy grail, monkey madness, and the wanted quest. And then after that, we got to get level 30 base stats, which honestly doesn't seem too far away. We only need to get 20 fletching levels, which is super quick. We only need 11 herb lore levels, which is even faster. We need 16 more range levels, 10 farming levels, 21 hunter levels, 13 more slayer levels, and 30 runecrafting levels. That is something I'm not looking forward to. But once we have those levels and do those quests, season one will be getting wrapped up. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to drop a like below. And if you're new here and you want to see the progression of my first ever main account, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. But with all that being said, I hope that you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.